This piece of art behind me is one of many Kobe Bryant memorials that are popping up throughout the city of Los Angeles. This particular one took street artist Jules Muck just under 24 hours to finish, and it's already become a popular spot for fans looking to pay their respects. The Dodgers haven't won a World Series since 1988, when Ronald Reagan was president and the CD had just been invented. I mean, where's the Bluetooth on this thing? I'm sure you're aware of some of the strong reaction to this decision, especially on social media. Some fans have said that they're canceling their season tickets or canceling booster donations. So how do you win those fans back on your side? Welcome back to ATVN. Some might say the Trojans are in sync this week because they have a bye, bye, bye. And the big news out of the bye week is the return of Keaton Slovis. Here at the Combine Fan Experience, you can even do some of the same drills that the athletes do. Right now, I'm going to do the vertical jump. I have a feeling I'm going to break some records. Could you hold this for just one second? I'm here at Murrieta Valley High School where moments ago dreams came true for recruits like three-star tight end Jack Yerry. Here's the moment he officially became a USC Trojan. I'm here at the Combine where it is raining and freezing cold. But things are really heating up for Michael Pittman Jr. Dante Williams away from Oregon. The poach duck will be USC's new cornerbacks coach and passing game coordinator. But most of all, USC is getting one of the best recruiters on the West Coast. At Oregon, he brought in three five stars from Southern California right in USC's backyard in just the past two seasons. Onyeka Okongwu made history last night, tying the school record for blocks in a game with eight in his first career action. When I came in as a freshman, I knew I wanted to play spike ball a lot, but there wasn't a club, and so we wanted to start something here. Three years later, the USC Spike Ball Club holds meetups every Friday, with 15 to 30 members showing up to play. They even compete in tournaments against schools like Cal Poly and UCLA. Freshman Max Wong has only been playing spike ball for about a year, but he's quickly fallen in love. The thing that I most liked about spike ball was its versatility, you know, like I could just grab a bag, set you know go out to lunch and you know pop it open and we'll play a little bit there aren't many rules in spike ball just like in volleyball one team serves and the other gets three hits to return the shot back onto the net but unlike in volleyball you can use your hands body or even feet <laughs> a team gets a point if their opponents can't return the shot but for these usc students spike ball is more than just a lawn game it's a community especially for huang who came to usc all the way from brazil applying and everything, found out USC was here. I also saw that USC had a spike ball club, so I was like, okay, you know, USC is kind of like a perfect fit right now. Spike ball now has 4 million players worldwide, and there are even talks about it being in the Olympics someday. Jutkins wants to turn pro sometime this year, but the pay isn't quite there yet. Spike ball, the company, you know, they don't make any money off of running tournaments, and so it's kind of hard for them to pay the top players right now, and so that's kind of a big discussion happening is how are we going to start paying people. As for the club, Jutkin's goals include adding more female players and competing for a national championship this spring. For Annenberg Media, I'm Trevor Denton. At 6'3", 225 pounds, Daquan Hampton doesn't often get overshadowed. But at USC, he sat behind Juju Smith-Schuster for two long years. His moment finally came in the last game of 2016, when he caught two touchdown passes against UCLA. They were the only two scores of his career. My emotion was like, finally. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I've just been waiting for that time to come. So it came, you know, I'm glad it came. Because if it didn't come at all, I probably would have been salty like that. I couldn't score at all while being in a top Division One college. It was supposed to be his breakout performance. But since then, he's been cut by three pro teams, and he's dealt with multiple injuries. Uh, I was this close to calling me. But, you know, I just kept going. So I said that was the hardest thing to get out that three-day funk I was in. In October, the LA Wildcats picked him to play in the upstart XFL, giving him his last chance to play pro football. In his first home game, Hampton caught one pass for 10 yards and didn't miss a block, all in front of 20 plus family members and friends. Well, everybody know my grind and what I've been going through and I just keep going, I've kept going. So I had a lot of support out here today. For now, Hampton's dreams of making it to the NFL are still alive. 
For Annenberg Media, I'm Trevor Denton.